Welcome everyone. My name is Rivka Rosenberg. People call me Rivki. Today I will teach you sixth graders a lesson and the lesson is called the football and the tree. Let's begin. What will we do today? Today we will learn important words and expressions. There will be storytelling. We will learn why it's bad to be a bully and an art activity. What do you need to prepare for this class? You would need a few crayons or colors, a pencil and a notebook. What do you see in these pictures? Look at picture one. What do you see? I see a boy and uh, in the middle or a girl, actually it looks like a boy and in, next to him a group of kids that are making fun of him and the boy does in the middle doesn't look very happy. What do you see in number two? I see a man and he's the big man is making fun of the small man, right? Very, very complicated situation. What is bullying? Today we will talk about bullying. Look at the picture here that I put here, the big picture. It says, now you will never be popular. And the girl in red, she says, no, she's making fun of, the small girl is making fun of her. Actually, this is called cyberbullying. It's on the internet. And you can see the two other pictures of people making fun of other people, treating them not very nicely. So what is bullying? Bullying is hitting, kicking, pushing, hurting, teasing, making fun of someone, or calling someone names. For example, if you call someone stupid, that's calling someone names. Bullying can happen at school, in the park, or online, on the internet. Bullies are very mean. They make other people feel very, very bad. You should never be a bully. Let's prepare for the story we will read today together. The important words are in front of you. Signed. When I sign my, my paper or document, it's called Hatima in Hebrew. Bully, as I just explained, is making fun of someone, treating someone in a very mean way. Grabbed. You see in the picture, grab someone by the hand, is taken by the hand. It's not a very nice thing to do, to grab someone. Write these words in your notebook and we will continue. If you don't have time to write them, maybe take a picture of my slides. Other important words. Precious. I put here a picture of a diamond. A diamond is a precious stone. Precious. Stare. Stares to look at someone like that. It's not nice to stare at people. When people sometimes, maybe a person falls on the street, it's not nice to stare at him like that. You should help him. Disappeared. Poof. Disappeared. Lehealem in Hebrew. Budge. Do you see the donkey here? He's not budging from his place. So the man is trying to pull him. Budge is to move. So I'll go over the words again. Signed. To sign something. Bully. Grabbed. Precious. Stare. Disappeared. And budge. Very important expression here for you today is hand in hand. Do you see the, the elderly lady? She's walking hand in hand with the two girls, hand in hand. Also in Hebrew, I think there is an expression like that. It's called yad biyad, hand in hand. So I'll just summarize one more time the important words 
and the important expression for today. Signed, bully, grabbed, precious, stare, disappeared, budge, and the expression is hand in hand, yad be yad. Match the words in and the expression with the pictures below. So below you have the words bully, signed, and hand in hand. I would like you to match the picture to the word. So you can just either make a uh, draw yourself a little picture so you remember it at home and write the word underneath it. I'll read the words again. Bully, signed, hand in hand. I'll be back soon. I know you had a shorter time, but I would like to continue with the lesson. I will just review. Bully is, of course, the two girls. Uh, you see one, the girl in the red and the girl in the blue. The girl in the red is bullying the other. She's pulling her hair. That's bully. Signed is when you take a pen or a pencil and you sign a document or uh, your parents maybe sometimes sign your test. Hand in hand is, of course, the elderly lady walking with the two girls. Let's check possible answers. I would like you to look at these sentences now. Bully. Don't be a bully. A bully is someone who isn't kind, is not nice, to someone smaller or weaker than them. So if you have in class maybe someone smaller than you or weaker than you or maybe uh, they have glasses or they're a little bit overweight don't bully them don't treat them uh, in a not a nice fa uh, fashion manner treat them nicely the word signed my mom signed my test Khatma signed and hand in hand we walked hand in hand with grandma While reading this story that we will read soon, please think about the following questions. You can take a picture of the slide, but I'd like you just to think about these questions. What did Jonathan receive from his father? What happened to the football in the beginning of the story? What did Jonathan do about his missing ball? And what made grandpa smile at the end. I would like you to think of these questions. Today we will talk about a story and the story is called The Football and the Tree. Here is my ball. It's not exactly a football but I, I brought a ball to show you that we're going to talk today about a ball. The Football and the Tree. The story was written by Mel Rosenberg and the illustrations, the um, pictures, were um, done by Etzion Goel. So the football and the tree. When Jonathan turned six, 
he received a football for his birthday. The ball was signed, Khatima, by a famous player. His father had brought it all the way from Brazil. Jonathan ran out to play in the park. Alec, a bully from the neighborhood, grabbed the ball and kicked it so hard and high that it got stuck in the tree. He just smiled and walked away. You see Alec, he kicked Jonathan's ball and now the ball is on the tree. Jonathan stood by the tree and cried. He came the next day and the day after that. Sometimes it rained, sometimes the wind blew, but his precious ball wouldn't budge. It wouldn't move. It was stuck on the tree. With time, the tree grew and the ball disappeared. Poof. Still, every birthday, Jonathan would come to the tree. He would stand and stare to look at the branches. The ball was nowhere to be found. One day, Jonathan met Joni and they fell in love. They got married and moved away. You see Joni and Johnny in the picture? Uh, sorry, Joni and Jonathan? Still, every year, Jonathan would drive with Joni to see the tree. He would tell her the story. When they had children, he would bring them to visit the tree as well. Jonathan's children grew up, got married, and had children of their own. When Annie, his eldest granddaughter, was six years old, Jonathan took her to see the tree. He shared his sad story. Grandfather, Annie said, there are so many trees in the park. Are you sure this is the right one? Even if the ball is still up there, it must be very, very old. Why don't we just go and buy a new ball and play here in the park? And so they did. Jonathan smiled for the first time in many years. They walked away together, hand in hand. And Jonathan never visited the tree again. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this very, very beautiful story. I would like you to take a few minutes and answer these questions in your notebook. I'm going to read the questions again. What did Jonathan receive from his fa father? Question number two. What happened to the football in the beginning of the story? Question number three. What did Jonathan do about his missing ball? And the last question. What made grandpa smile at the end? Answer these questions and I'll be back very soon.
Welcome back. What did you answer? Did you have time to answer these questions? Let's go over them together. What did Jonathan receive from his father? Of course, Jonathan received a football. And earlier, I showed you my ball. What happened to the football in the beginning of the story? Do you remember? A bully, do you remember his name? Alec, kicked it and it got stuck in the tree. What did Jonathan do about his missing ball? First he cried and every year he returned, he went back to the tree to look for the ball. What made grandpa smile at the end? His granddaughter suggested, I think her name was Annie, she, 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 sorry, she suggested to buy a new ball, of course. Let's continue. What is the moral of the story? Do you know what a moral is? A moral is supposed to teach you something. It's supposed to teach the reader to be a better person. What have you learned from this story? Why did I teach you this story? What have you learned from what Alec did to Jonathan? What is the moral of the story? I'd like you to think about it for a few seconds. Once again, the moral of the story is supposed to teach you a lesson, to teach the reader to be a better person. Now at the end of the story, how did you feel? when you read about what happened to the ball? How did you feel about what Alec did to Jonathan? How did you feel about the ending of the story? We will talk about the moral very soon, but I would like you to think about these questions and answer them in your uh, notebook. How did you feel when you read about what happened to Jonathan's ball? How did you feel about what Alec did to Jonathan? that he kicked the ball into the tree. How did you feel about that? And how did you feel about the ending of the story?
Welcome back. How did you feel about when you read about what happened to Jonathan's ball? How did you feel about what Alec did to Jonathan? And how did you feel about the ending of the story? I'd like you to, let's continue and we will answer these questions. What is the moral of the story? You remember what moral is? Moral of the story is supposed to teach you, the reader, to be a better person. So, what is, when you look at this picture, what can you learn from this and why did I put it here? What is it connect, how is it connected to the story? I see a group of kids, they're all uh, together, they look like very good friends, they're all different from each other, right? And this is what I thought is the moral of the story. Respecting other people, accepting other people. I'd like to share with you a quote that I know from Hebrew, but I think it's very, very, uh, I think I can translate it into English. The quote is, is, goes this way. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Or in Hebrew it's, Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. Love your neighbor or your friend as you love yourself. What does that mean? That means that you're supposed to love other people and treat them nicely like you treat yourself. Look at the picture again. What is the connection between the picture and the quote? And of course, our story. Have the story in mind. So what is the connection between love your neighbor as yourself this picture of the group of, the, of kids, what is the connection between them? Think about it. I'd like to give you a short assignment now. Please draw or take a picture that connects to the moral of the story with this quote, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can draw this. What is what does it mean to you? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. How do you treat your friends? How do you treat your family? How do you treat the people that you know? How is it connected to the moral of the story? Write two sentences describing this quote using the new vocabulary words from today. So two sentences describing love your neighbor as you love yourself. What does that mean to you? How, do you? how can you explain it? To me, for example, it means treating other people like I treat myself. I treat myself with respect, right? I treat my body with respect. I treat myself with respect. This is how I treat other people. I accept them who, the way they are. This is an example. And bullet number three, what kinds of bullying do you know about? How can you help prevent bullying? What does that mean? What kinds of bullying do you know? Which mean do maybe uh, children in your class treat someone in a very bad manner? They kick them, they hit them. What kinds of bullying do you know about? And how can you prevent bullying? How can you help it not happen? Take a few minutes and complete this assignment and I'll be back soon.
Hi again. I hope you had time to do this assignment and I hope you drew a beautiful picture about love your neighbor as you love yourself. What did you write about describing this quote using the new vocabulary? Let's go back a little bit and look at the story again. You remember? Wait, let's go back to the way you remember Alec? He was a bully from the neighborhood and he grabbed Jonathan's ball and kicked it to the tree. He was, John, Alec was a bully. This is, you're not supposed to be a bully. You're supposed to treat people very nicely as if they are, treat them, treat them as if the way you treat yourself. This is the moral of the story. Now let's go back to the last slide. And do you remember Annie, Jonathan's granddaughter? She made grandpa very happy by the fact that she told him, let's go get a new ball and forget about it 
and enjoy playing together. So she made grandpa very, very happy by this. So, this is the moral of the story, as I think. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, at the end of the lesson, you can read and write new words. For example, to sign, a bully. You remember the word to sign? A bully. You can read and write new expressions. For example, hand in hand. You remember the expression, hand in hand? I showed you at the beginning a picture of the grandmother holding uh, the two girls hand in hand. They were walking. So this is your new expression. Now you can also read a story and reflect on the moral of the story. And you have enjoyed, I hope, the art activity connected to the moral of the story. Thank you for watching me. My name is Rivka Rosenberg, and I hope to see you soon again.